Hi friends. Well, everybody is distracted with war in Ukraine and war in, uh, in Palestine and all these things. This is what it's all about. This is so important because while we feel sorry for all kinds of people all over the world, right? Our nations are being trampled under. It's all prophesied, but we have to understand it. So in this video, we kind of refute Islam for once and for all. But first, take a look at these short clips about what is happening to God's children, right? And it is our fault, right? We didn't listen to God. We followed a different God, right? But a few of us repented and are turning to the truth and understanding the true gospel, right? Because our children are starting to suffer. Messenger of Allah, and I be witness, I be witness that that Jesus, Jesus is the messenger, is a messenger and follower and follower of of God. Muhammad, Abduhu, Wa Rasulu, I fin, I fin, bear witness. There's no deity worthy of worship. There's no deity worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I think bear witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad is his messenger, is his messenger and, final prophet and final prophet of Allah. Of Allah. Takbir! Yeah, that is uh, really happening. These things are truly happening now, right? And Muslims are so confident about themselves. Well, they don't understand that it is not Allah who brought them into the West. It was the other people who I discuss a lot on my channel. They opened the doors for Islam to come in. They didn't even have to fight. They couldn't fight us. So they had, they are brought in as a Trojan horse, right? So let's refute it because a lot of Christians even start to doubt. Well, maybe they are part of the Abrahamic family and it's all lies, right? I'm going to explain it to the T. So far, there are many debates between Christians and Muslims, even Christian professors and people with a PhD, college professors, university professors, pastors, all, and historians, they try to refute Islam, and they all fail. Look what's happening to the West. We are overrun, right? They all fail. Why is that? Because they still believe in a false universal gospel right and you can go on the history and you can try to uh, refute the quran and what muhammad did it's all doesn't mean anything because many christians think well as as long as we can convince them about the trinity or that jesus is the father or the god of as long as we just uh, can convince that they will repent and they will turn to jesus and we will all sing kumbaya and it will never happen because jesus did not come for these people. You have to wake up, people, right? All these passes, it is just a clown show. And how come that if you are a pastor and you went to Bible school, that you can't see that? The obvious truth. It's right there in Scripture. But they think the Scripture is nullified by Jesus, right? Jesus will come back to sing Kumbaya with everybody. And at the same time, even our children are being converted into this evil religion, right? So let's dive into it. On TikTok, there is a Muslim uh, teacher. He looks white, but he is a Muslim, right? But he is lying. It is not true. So I just commented, uh, and he's not used to Christians knowing the scripture, that he got triggered, right? And because he was triggered, he made a video about my comment. So let's go over this video. The promise made to Abraham only went to Isaac and to Jacob, not to Ishmael. Oh my goodness, you're so smart. Oh, maybe not. Sorry to give you that much credit. The reality sits is that a promise was given to Ishmael and or Ismail, alayhi salam. And that promise is this. Take a look. So what he is showing here is not the Bible. It's a commentary on the Bible, which he probably got from some kind of Muslim indoctrination book. But he is referring to Genesis 17, 20. 
So let's take a look at what it says. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. So this is what he's referring to. See, we will be a great nation. But, you know, the Hindus are a great nation too. That doesn't mean it. Uh, that doesn't mean that this is going to be the nation promised to Abraham because they ignored all the surrounding verses. So let's go one verse back and read one verse beyond. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with Isaac for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Then we come to, but for Ishmael, I have heard thee, okay, behold, I have blessed him, I will make him fruitful, I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So God made a covenant with Abraham, right? And from his loins would come a nation and a multitude of nations from his seed. And the promised seed was going to go to Abraham and Sarah. But Sarah was old and Abraham lost patience and made a son with his bond woman from Egypt, Hagar. And they got a child called Ishmael. But God said, this is not the promised seed, right? We just read it. The promise and the covenant will go to Isaac. So later Sarah got pregnant and they beget this promised seed, this Isaac, right? So Muslims like to uh, cherry pick verses and they say, well, here it says that Ishmael was going to be a great nation. Yes, right? Ishmael was sent away, right? Ishmael was jealous of Isaac. Ishmael even tried to kill Isaac. So they sent him away. He was blessed. Go your way. You're going to be a great nation. You're going to be the father of, of a great nation. That's it. That's all it says. But we just read it. The promise to Abraham went to Isaac. So let's take, let, let's listen what, the, what else he has to say. There you go says that God, in God's opinion, a great nation is promised to Ishmael. No great nation under God respecting any of any of the prophets. Yes, Ishmael would be a great nation, but it, nowhere does it say a great nation under God. It doesn't say that. He just adds that. Where does it say that, that the Ishmaelites would be the people of God? That is just not there. He just adds things. He makes things up. Ever, any of them, was Islam. Islam accepts all the prophets from Adam all the way through to the end. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So he says that Muslims respect the prophets all the way from Adam to Muhammad. But this is oxymoron. Muhammad was not of that same bloodline at all, right? It, <laughs> Muhammad claimed to have come from Ishmael, right? Nothing to do with the biblical genealogy. We accept them all. We are the final revelation. And as in the beginning, the firstborn, also in the end, he is the one who has the final religion. And he has the final way of life. So he claims that Muhammad is the final revelation, the final prophet of the Bible. And one of the reasons, oh, there are two main verses uh, they use to make this claim. The first one is in Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, where God will raise up a prophet like Moses. They say that is Muhammad, obviously. But let's take a good read. I will raise them up. Uh, he's talking about the Israelites, right? I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. So this prophet would also be an Israelite. And Muhammad was not an Israelite. 
and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This is obviously talking about Jesus, because Jesus was an Israelite, right? The tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, those were of the tribes of Israel. Nothing to do with Mohammed. And the other verse they like to use is John 14, 16. And Jesus prayed, And I will pray to the Father, and he, the Father, shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now this is also not talking about Muhammad. This is obviously talking about the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit may, shall abide with us forever, right? Well, Muhammad is no longer abiding with anybody, right? Muhammad died a long time ago, and he did not raise from the dead. Of course, this is another cherry-picked verse, which they used to like to apply to themselves. But it is obviously also not talking about the, the race-mixed um, Muhammad. And why do I say race-mixed? Well, take a look at this verse. So in order this race mixing among the Arabs, we have to understand that Isaac had two sons, right? The bloodline, the promises to Abraham would go through Isaac, through his sons. But Esau was cut off. He lost his birthright, the dominion mandate, the land, because Esau didn't care about God's kingdom, God's righteousness, and developing the nation's promise to Abraham. Right? And Esau even sold it to his brother Jacob for a bowl of soup. So let's take a look at what Esau did. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. Why was this a grief of mind? Because these people were Canaanites. And, you know, and we know that the Canaanites intermixed with the evil seed line of Cain. So this serpent evil seed came also in the children of Esau. And it grieved, uh, it caused grief to Isaac and Rebekah. So what did Esau do next? All right, let's read it in chapter 28. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Badam Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Badan Aram to take him away from thence, because these were the same people, he was sent there to marry and find a wife of his own people. And that as he had blessed him, gave him charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, because there are also Canaanites living there. Don't take one of them, take one of your own. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to Badam Aram. So Jacob was faithful. He obeyed, right? He obeyed his father. But Esau seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father. Esau married and made babies with Canaanites, and it did not please his father. Esau went unto Ishmael, and took unto wives which he had. Mahalat, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth, to be his wife. So now we see that Esau intermarried with Canaanites, right? His children had this Canaanite evil blood. And now Esau also went to the Ishmaelites and corrupted his daughters, right? And don't you think all these people would intermarry also with each other, right? And these intermixed people were called Edomites, but they were in close relationship to Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites and Edomites didn't care about keeping it in the family. Of course, they intermarried with each other. Therefore, the, the Edomites and the Ishmaelites carried this Canaanite Cain's uh, seed within them. This would make them an eternal enemy against the children of God.
religion. And he has the final way of life. And his nation is the nation under Allah. The nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is prophesied three times in the Old Testament that Ismail shall have a great nation. And a great nation, if God says it, it means it's a monotheistic nation that God approves of. Oh, that kind of fucks you up, huh? Kind of fucks everything up, doesn't it? Excuse my language, but your whole plan's destroyed. Now, I'd like to bring an oldie but a goodie. And just a moment before I do that, preface, you're not promised the land without condition. Do you not realize that? You have taken other gods like the star, like the army, like your lineage and your bloodline over the Torah. You know, 90% of those in Israel don't even practice Judaism. Yeah, he keeps saying that uh, Ishmael would be a great nation, right? But what kind of nation, what kind of man uh, would Ishmael even be? Well, let's read it. So it's very clear that the Bible tells us over and over again that the promise to Abraham would go to Isaac, the son born of Abraham and Sarah. But Abraham had sex with his bondwoman, Hagar, right? So the angel of the Lord tells Hagar, Behold, thou art with child and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. And he, Ishmael, will be a wild man, right? Even a wild donkey of a man, in other translations. What is a donkey? A donkey is a very stubborn, stupid, ignorant animal, right? And we see that Arabs are very ignorant and stubborn. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Does it say that he shall dwell in the presence of God? No, he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren, but he will constantly fight everyone. And we see that Ishmaelites were constantly fighting each other and others, right? This is the prophecy about Ishmael, nothing to do with the kingdom God. And secondly, he starts to talk about the Torah, right? No one keeps the Torah. We keep the Torah. Listen, the Torah was not given to Ishmael. Never. The Torah and the covenants were only given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The continuation of that bloodline, nothing to do with Ishmael. Let me prove it to you. So uh, this, this video would be too long if I covered the entire Old Testament, but we should know that the covenant at Sinai was given to Moses. Moses was an Israelite. The covenant was given to Israel only. Ishmael was not even there, right? But he claims, well, Muhammad is the final revelation. Well, let's take a look. Because we have a new covenant now. Did the new covenant went to other people, like the church teaches, the Gentiles, which is a false translation? No, the, even the new covenant did not go to Ishmael. Read it in Jeremiah. Behold, the days come. It's a prophecy about a new covenant that God will make with his people. Behold, the days come, said Yahweh. I will make a new covenant with who? With Ishmael? No, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So how can how can Muhammad even be the final prophet if he's not of Judah and Israel? Right? This is the ignorance they live in. Right? Uh, the new covenant, the old and new covenant, were given to the same people and the same people alone. Right? Yes, nothing exists without God, but God calls his people, a peculiar people he loves. Let's read some more. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You, Israel, only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. God knew 
only his people, the people from Israel. And he gave them a covenant, right? But the covenant was keeping the law that was only given to them. And if you don't, there's going to be consequences, right? But the Bible says that God chastens those he loves. Nothing about Ishmael here. So the law of Moses doesn't even apply to Arabs, right? So every time an imam goes in the backyard and slaughters an animal, he is even breaking the law because the law, the old law, the law of Moses, specifically says that an animal has to be sacrificed at the temple in Jerusalem by a Levitical priesthood. Arabs don't have neither. They are just Moses covenant wannabes, right? So they, they do not only break the law, the law wasn't even given to them. And secondly, because Esau intermarried with Canaanites and he brought his children with his Canaanite practices into the land of Seir, which is northern Arabia, where also the Ishmaelites lived, they started to worship Canaanite gods, right? Just like the Midianites. It was all Canaanite gods. And Islam even tells you that the, the Kaaba was filled with idols and different gods. Those were all Canaanite gods, right? But Muhammad wanted to create a new religion, right? A monotheistic religion, right? It was all inspired by the children of Esau, we know today as Jews, right? Who practice Canaanite religion, right? And you can call it monotheistic, right? But it is not the covenant. Uh, uh, Christianity is not a covenant. Uh, it's not a religion you can choose, right? Christianity is a covenant. It's the new covenant we're in. It has nothing to do with these Arabs and Jews. I'm sorry to tell you, but it is just not, right? And there's a lot of indication that Muhammad was indeed influenced by Jewish Talmudians, right? There is a lot of similarity between the people of the Talmud and what ended up in a book known as the Quran, right? Also, we see that in Islam, there is many Roman Catholic theology in there, right? All kinds of old Bedouins philosophy, right? And fairy tales, right? No, Islam is not the religion of God Almighty, even though they can say it all day long. It is just not true. And they say they honor the prophets of the Bible, but actually they do not honor the prophets. The prophets never went to Ishmael, right? The prophets were preaching to the brothers of Israel, right? Nothing more, nothing less. But the problem with the church is that they think, well, God loves everybody, right? If you just believe in Jesus. So they try to convert Muslims, try to convince them that Jesus is God, and then hopefully they will become Christian, and it will not work. Yes, some Muslims convert into this universal religion of Christianity, but I'm not talking about this false religion. I'm talking about the covenant that was given to us. Our forefathers broke it, right? We were divorced, scattered, but reconciled. And the people of us, our forefathers left in Judah, they also moved out, went into the Roman Empire. Everything was destroyed, right? And it was the Arabs who moved in, especially after um, 7 AD, when Christianity was all, the new covenant was already in full uh, access in Europe, right? The Arabs uh, conquered the Middle East and North Africa, right? But they are not the religion of the Bible. And Muhammad is not the final prophet because he was not an Israelite. Now, you can, I can show you the rest of this clown. But he's just a clown, right? So um, know your scripture. Know your, and understand your scriptures. Get out of these religions like Jewism, um, Islam, and Christianity. Get out of it. These are man-made religions, right? We European people are not in a religion. We are in a covenant with God.
And the Bible doesn't say that God is the God of Ishmael and of Esau and of Jacob. The Bible says over and over and over again that God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. No one else. Not Ishmael, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God is very specific. He tells us constantly, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we are the children of Jacob. Reconciled by Jesus Christ, brought into the new covenant, right? And this kingdom of God is going to be awesome. It is not fully consummated yet. We are in trials and tribulations, right? We are being tested. God is seeing what you're made of and what your works are made of. But judgment is coming. Judgment. So return to the truth. God bless you.